All right, I'm going to call this work session to order. Are we uh, on the record? We have a recorder? Great. So uh, this is just a work session. Uh, we'll have the actual meeting at 5 o'clock. Um, but I want an opportunity to have a little bit more of a free-flowing conversation um, and a little more informal setting. I apologize that we're doing it here. That was just a logistical issue. We usually do work sessions uh, over at City Hall where it's a little more uh, intimate. But um, what I was hoping to do today, so first we're going to have introductions. Uh, and then I'll explain the, uh, the format. But let's do the introduction starting with you, Felix. Felix Rapp. Forrest Dunbar. Eric Croft. Dick Tran. Pete Peterson. Christopher Constant. Amy. I am Amy Watkins. Great. So uh, what we're going to do today, again, is just have a work session. We're scheduled for an hour and a half. We don't have to use it all. Again, that's not a target. Um, so. Uh, if we feel like we've got a good sense of these folks, uh, then we can all take a break and we'll come back at five and have the actual meeting and the vote. So uh, what I'd like to do at the work session is first, I'd like a one minute introduction from uh, all the people who um, are asking to be appointed. And then we'll open it up just to questions. And the only, uh, the only requirement I ask of my colleagues is that if you ask a question of one person, you ask it of all of them. That makes sense. Unless it's a specific follow-up to a response, if you have a question for one of the applicants, every all the applicants get a chance to answer. Um, and then to the applicants, um, a reminder that uh, at the actual meeting, you'll have another chance to do a three-minute uh, personal statement. So you can do, you can say whatever you want now and whatever you want then. But you'll have one minute now, and then you'll have three minutes then. So um, note for the record, we've been joined by Mr. Wellington. Um, and if everybody wants to log into their, uh, my colleagues, if you want to log in, uh, that just allows me to see who's in the queue. It's a little bit more awkward to, to see you guys here. So, all right, with that, um, let's start and let's just do these uh, one minute introductions as we said before. Um, and Mr. Danger, if you would like to start, we'll just start on the left and work uh, down to the right. So please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Nicholas Danger, I'm currently the Chairman of the Public Safety Advisory Commission, appointed by the Mayor. I've lived in Anchorage for 40 years. I'm currently retired. And um, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Danger. All right. Next up, we have Mr. Schultz. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Schultz. Um, lifelong resident. Uh, Except for the times I've been out of state going to school, I consider myself a lifelong resident of Anchorage. Uh, when I was able to move back four years ago, I couldn't be happier that I was able to make it back to the 99517 zip code where I grew up. I uh, just celebrated my 20 year class reunion from West Anchorage High School last weekend, uh, meeting up with a bunch of former classmates. Um, and I just saw this as an opportunity while I was currently off contract with the university to maybe step up and start with my community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. All right, everybody is coming well within the one minute, which I appreciate. Uh, Mr. Herman. Thank you, Chairman of our members of the Assembly. Thanks, first of all, for uh, making this opportunity to fill the second seat for the district. We really appreciate that in the district. I'm Ira Herman. I live at 1041 West 23rd. Uh, my wife, Virginia, and I have lived in um, pretty much the same area, the two blocks of the same house for. 1975, you don't get around very much. Um, I think uh, I know many of you from having worked with uh, the assembly of the city of Hall. Uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity to be available to you if you choose to, like me, uh, I'll make it much more I can say about that. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tremaine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Will Tremaine. I grew up in Aiken, Alaska. Obviously, skydiving, woodworking, uh, spending time outdoors. Um, I spent about three years in the area, love Stenard, love to see it get better. And is that all I got? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cubitz. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Cubitz. Uh, I spent most of my life in Stenard, but I finally made it to turn again about 20 years ago when I built my second house. My first house in Stenard. Pretty much grew up there, went to West High. Uh, like a lot of us, all, all of our young children were raised in West High. Uh, some of you know I've worked for the last year, and I'm still there. It's a nice treasure. I 
serve on the assembly six and a half years, several years ago, because a half year, if you don't remember, is the year that we extended to change the elections from October to April. So when we ran that year, we ran for three and a half years. So I've got a six and a half year term. I'm happy to help out. Happy to come in and sit in. Please do that. Thank you, Mr. Cubitz. So I'm looking at our uh, thing here. It looks like you, for some reason you can't request to speak. I don't know why. Uh, so we'll start with you, uh, Mr. Croft, while our tech guys get ready. And uh, again, the only, the only thing I ask, so I guess I would ask um, to limit within three minutes your answers. And then for my colleagues, please, uh, any question you ask, you ask of all of them. Thank you. Yeah, we, the clerk pre-qualified everybody saying they're qualified to run, but not filling your one minute when you have it to speak may be a disqualification. I'm not sure anybody's qualified if they don't. Oh, I think the shorter the better. Oh, okay. um, what, what do each of you think um, are the most important issues facing the city over the next year? And we, we'll do it however long, Mr. Chairman. Do you want to start at the other end? Yeah, well, you know, we start with Mr. Cubitz and work to Mr. Danger. Uh, well, as far as, you know, I follow the news pretty well. I kind of know the issues that the city is facing. I've been following the court uh, problem for a long, long time. I know there has to be a solution to that. It just has to be period. And it seems like things are getting a little better in that area. That's extremely important. A long-range capital projects is what I sort of do for the Alaska Railroad. We have the same issue, so. Again. That's real important. Public safety, we can't talk about anything without that. People's major concern about it. I happen to feel it's getting better with the police, full awareness of it. The homeless problem uh, is obvious, obvious, and there's a lot of solutions swirling around out there. I don't know what they all are, but it's something that we have to, we have to, see. We have to keep our eyes on. We have to get our arms around those. Uh, those are just the three that I can think of. Thank you, Mr. Cubitt. Mr. Tremaine? Uh, I, think our, I think the biggest issue that we're facing most of the younger generation is drugs. With drugs, everywhere in this town, it's become a pandemic. Everybody knows about it here. Here about the news. <coughs> Back up, it's in the drugs. Um, I think uh, the efforts that put forth with the um, you know, policing, uh, policing offenders, and it's just not really working. I think there needs to be more crackdown, more effort to put down the uh, busting bigger drug dealers. You can walk down the street sometimes at night and just get an error. That and I guess there's a homeless issue that is just getting out of control. Uh, combating that, I think a lot more than just uh, it's not more than just talking about it. We need more people out there actually cleaning up those homeless camps. <clears throat> um, trying to fill three minutes here. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes is the, is the ceiling, not the target. So right. uh, that's that's just fine. Thank you, Mr. Tremaine. And uh, to everyone, I, I, I encourage brevity, to me at least, is a very valuable quality. Uh, Mr. Perman. Thank you. For me, the overriding issue, maybe it's longer term than this next year, is that this town remain a great place for young adults to develop and prosper. I live with my two kids, and one of them has chosen to go to Seattle, the other one's here. And I can see it's quite a struggle, much more so than it was uh, when I was her age. And so for us to maintain the economic vitality, and the desire of this place to be a place to live in is very important to me. One of the elements of that, of course, is uh, public safety. The whole thing that's um, generated out of the opioid problems we're having right now, heroin, methamphetamines. Uh, we've got to get a handle on that. There's ways to do that. Uh, there's lots of solutions out there. We just have to move more and more aggressively on some of those. And I'll, I'll add a third one here, uh, and that's downtown Anchorage. I think we really need to do some focusing, all hands on deck, to improve our downtown. Um, I've worked in downtown over the years, and I've been back a lot recently, and 
other than in the summer, like right now it's very nice, but other times of the year, um, it's not a place you necessarily want to be. I'd like to help you out, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Perman. Uh, Mr. Schultz. It's a somewhat interesting question that you're asking us to speak on the most prominent issues facing the city for the next year, when essentially this would be a, a position for the next six to seven weeks. Uh, that said, in the spirit of uh, you know, engaging with the question, uh, I, I would uh, second the uh, previous uh, acknowledgement of con uh, public concerns regarding crime and public safety. Uh, that said, I uh, do have uh, perhaps a cautious sense of optimism that recent efforts to hire back and return uh, the Anchorage Police Department to something uh, approximately full staffing will uh, start to, over time, uh, pick up and have a lag effect to hopefully address that. Granted, there would need to be perhaps some of the considerations of how those energies are focused, um, but that is uh, something that I think, uh, while it has been bad lately, as we know in the papers, uh, we are probably in a pretty good position for it to be getting better going forward. Um, some other concerns uh, that have been articulated in slightly different ways, but I'll uh, frame as or uh, address as affordable housing, meeting the needs of the younger folks uh, in this community to be able to be a part of this community, to feel like they don't have to leave, uh, to go out of state uh, in order to uh, be able to adapt uh, and afford a comfortable um, standard of living here in, in the English community. Uh, related to that, uh, there's been some uh, touching on issues such as housing insecurity for other segments of the population. Uh, I think that that uh, contributes uh, to the uh, greater sense of the quality of well-being and life in our community. Uh, but then there's other things, some smaller things that are perhaps uh, less controversial and you know, easily forgotten, uh, such as uh, ease and access of transportation networks in this community. Making sure that people are able to get around in order to uh, trans uh, get themselves back and forth from work uh, to home in the uh, easy fashion or a relatively uh, easy fashion. Um, you know, for some parts of town, that might be uh, a focus on more greater walkability in certain neighborhoods, while in other parts of town, that might be uh, uh, might translate into uh, more conventional uh, approaches to uh, facilitating transportation growth and development. But essentially, uh, all of this builds up to the idea of building a greater sense of community writ large. The idea that there's more that unites us as the uh, members of the Anchorage community than divides us, and that uh, we really should be looking to uh, institutions such as this to uh, help with uh, problem solving. Uh, I, I believe, uh, given my educational background, that uh, government is uh, a means of helping to overcome collective action problems that individuals left to their own devices wouldn't be able to accomplish, but that we get uh, various voices from the community together. Sometimes it's a messy process, but I think the results of those processes are generally for the greater good. And that's the orientation I would adopt if I held a position for the Thank, Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Actually, before I acknowledge you, Mr. Bain, I believe we're joining Ms. LaFrance. Ms. LaFrance, are you on the phone? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Perfect. I apologize to those that were speaking while we were trying to get her, uh, get that set up. That was our fault. Uh, Mr. Danger, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the issue dealing with us right now, one, the uh, homelessness, which you guys have been working very hard with. Uh, I've been to a number of those meetings, and I know that you're all over that. The opioid crisis, you've also been dealing with that very well. Um, crime. Car theft, um, shoplifting, something that we need to, uh, we're dealing with very well. The police department's doing a good job, you guys are on that, very good. And then the only other big issues I see right now is um, dealing with marijuana, people which you guys have been dealing with very well, and uh, taxes, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Danger. Okay, so uh, let's go to Mr. Wilton. Uh, thanks. Uh, so, uh, tell me about what community council you're in and your involvement with that community council. And we'll start with you, Mr. Danger. What community council I'm in? Yes. I live in the Spinard area. Okay. So, I'm not involved with the community council. I've been to a couple of their meetings, but I'm not involved with them directly. Okay. So, but that's my area. I live right over in the 32nd in Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. Danger. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schultz. Uh, similar response. I've attended a few uh, community councils. I'm not currently actively involved or holding a position of a, as an officer in any of them. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Perman. 
I live in the North Star Community Council area. Um, I was chair of that community council 25 years ago, something like that. I've been active in it since. Uh, a long time even before that, I was the, the president of the Rabbit Creek Community Council back in the days when uh, members were uh, property owners and members there was nobody living up there. So I met two presidents of the community councils. And uh, as an aide to an assembly member, um, every month I went to five community councils, Spinard, Turnigan, Taku, Campbell, uh, North Star, and Sand Lake. So yeah, great. It's a very important part of local government, that's how you find out what's on people's minds. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tremaine. Excuse me. Um, uh, I'm not currently involved in the community council. Um, I show up uh, early. So. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Tremaine. Mr. Cubitz. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm in the uh, Turnigan Community Council area, and uh, certainly not a regular member, but if people know Turnigan Community Council, when there's an issue comes up, it fires people up, it gets packed quickly. And I always show up at the, at the big ones. And years ago, of course, when I was on the assembly, I did attend the councils. Snard is where I grew up. I, went, I was quite involved with Snard Community Council when I first started becoming a small contractor and helped start the services, so I know that there pretty well. But uh, turning is where I think. Thank you, Mr. Cubitz. I guess uh, I did do this for you, Mr. Croft, but Mr. Boyle, do you have any follow-up questions or can we go to Mr. Moskin? Um, I, I may have another, but I think... Okay, no, I was no, just thinking if there was some specific one. I'm trying to think of a way where we could do, like, if you had like, a specific follow-up with one person, you could do that. Um, but let's keep going down the line. Okay. Uh, Mr. Moskin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, we're going to take all three minutes, I'm sure, for my question, because it's four parts. I'm getting it all in at once. Um, if you could please give me a description of your work history, your education, your involvement in your community. It doesn't have to be community council, it can be the lines or the office or whatever. Um, or if it's just picking up parks, I'd like to know that. And also, I want to know why you think you would be a good representative to hold this seat for the next seven weeks. We'll start with uh, Mr. Cubitz. I only wrote down three, and it was really <laughs> Jim, is your microphone on because we can't? No, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. Uh, so the first one, first one was work history. Uh, worked my way through college, construction. Uh, I did go to college at uh, the University of Bachelor of Economics. Came back, started a construction company at a very young age, Cubits Construction, which operated for about 15 years, and I merged into commercial real estate because I ended up buying a business park. So that's basically the active private sector part. In 1998, uh, I got a phone call from the Alaska Railroad, said, would you come and run the real estate and construction part of the railroad? And I've been doing that ever since. Uh, education, I told you about, just had a bachelor's, although I had half a master's at UAA in economics, but never finished it. I was too busy to make money. It was time to do that. I kind of regret it. But why? Uh, I just, when I saw it come up, I really think uh, Mr. Crawford for making sure that our part of town was representative. I just thought, gosh, I can slide in that seat. I spent six, six years there. I, I understand what's going on. Uh, to me, government, local government is government. It's where government belongs. It's based on relationships, constituents. Uh, and as I <coughs> may say later in one of my comments, is that I've spent hours in the produce department of cars with people lined up to ask you questions when there was a hot topic going on in the assembly. That's really what it was all about. So I just thought I could slide in. There's, there's certainly competent people in the state who could do it. To me, it was just sort of a public service thing. I only serve on one board of directors at a time. Currently, I'm an Anchorage Downtown Partner. Should have board of directors. Uh, so that's my uh, only other outside involvement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cubitz. Mr. Tremaine. Uh, my work is here to start it off in the commercial fishing industry at the bottom of the barrel, slime line. Uh, started working on boats, made it in management. Uh, currently, uh, <coughs> manager and director of operations for uh, five uh, commercial fishing vessels in Bering Sea. Managed to boats. Um, I got my uh, bachelor's degree in uh, 
Rochester, New York, in fine art photography at the at Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, I, uh, I definitely reach out to the community. Um, the, the kids around town, the, the, uh, the younger generation around town kind of intermingles and I mean, restaurants, uh, venues around town, social situations. I don't really uh, find myself anywhere uh, formal. Um, why would I be a good fit? I think, uh, I think we need to get more voice from our, uh, you know, the younger guys in town. I think uh, as the city ages, maybe, oh, please don't be offended by this, maybe the politicians age a little bit with it. Um, Maybe not necessarily complacency, uh, but you know when you're around here long enough, things kind of might not pop out uh, as much as they would to like not necessarily a newer set of eyes, but a different perspective. Uh, it's a pretty fun guy to be around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tremaine. Uh, Mr. Perm. Thank you. Uh, my. Education. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut, and I went to Norwalk High School, which is very much like West High School. I think it's in my mind sometimes, and I went to Boston University. Got myself a very useful degree as a stage theater director. <laughs> so naturally, I came to Alaska to go off and turn into the Turnpike. But fortunately, I had my trade uh, as carpenter, so I had all my carpentry tools with me, which came in extremely handy, a lot more so than my, my theater degree did. In the early years, so I was building houses here and up in the valley, uh, remodels, and etc. Um, eventually, my career path has led me into the, uh, the cultural and arts arena in the not for profit sector here. Uh, I thought the longest tenure for me, uh, 20 years, as the director of the Anchorage Concert Association, which is the organization that presents lots of uh, concerts and theater, Broadway shows, and whatnot at the pack. Uh, more recently, uh, seven years, six, seven years at the Alaska Humanities Forum, which is a statewide organization. And currently, uh, for the past eight years, I have been working as the director of the Atwood Foundation, where I have the privilege, and really is a privilege, to sit on the other side of the table from what I was used to and be able to provide funds to those organizations that have you know, strong needs and, and make a good case for it. Um, involvement, uh, Jim, I, I'll move myself with three boards at a time. Right now I have uh, the Forica Group, I'm on the Operations Board there. I'm also on the uh, Institute of Art as well. I have also a public policy body. Uh, that's the two I'm on right now, so I have, a, I have a one left. Um, and one of the reasons, uh, is, as far as why I'm applying, uh, when it became apparent that you folks were going to make this seat available, that, well, I don't know who else my brother had it. Um, I think it'd be great if you had you know, one choice at least that could, could do the work. And, and I do have that, that background. I, I have watched the assembly and never pushed the button, the, the red or green button. But I do understand how the process works. Um, I can, as they say, hit the ground running. I'm very familiar with the issues in front of you. There's many of the same issues we've had for years. And I have some strong background in that. And that's why. In the public service, I put my name forward. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chair? You. Yes. Uh, just a quick interruption. So, as a matter of disclosure, since Mr. Furman noted his employment at the Alaska Humanities Forum in 2003, he hired me and I worked for him directly 15 years ago. It's not a conflict at this time, but it's worth noting on the record. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Okay. Uh, we will go on to Mr. Schultz. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to switch up the order of the responses just a little bit uh, because I think it'll uh, flow a little bit better. And I'll start with education and work history, community involvement, and why we need the representative. Uh, education, uh, grew up here, uh, bounced around, uh, lived in different parts of town, but uh, finished. I uh, was in the IA program, which is now the HD program, eventually matriculated on up West Anchorage High School, graduated 20 years ago. Uh, bounced around in undergrad. I thought I wanted to be a paleontologist, so I went to school in Wyoming for my first two years because they had more fossils there than, than people. Um, after realizing that it was more of a, uh, a hobby and not a vocational choice, 
Um, I ended up uh, bouncing back home, uh, competing for the uh, Seal Bay program at UAA for a couple of years, and then uh, had reasons and bounced out to the University of Idaho to, uh, for my fifth and final year of undergraduate. Uh, to graduate. Uh, took a year off, came back, worked at Northrop Bank for a year. So banking, uh, when I have not been a, a student, is uh, probably the uh, area of expertise or the work history that I have the most of. Uh, but then I went off uh, to graduate school at uh, Purdue University, uh, where I was a uh, long and tooth grad student, picking up my master's, and then entered my uh, PhD in political science along the way. Um, so while I was a grad student, uh, my employment came uh, by being essentially an educator in training. So you know, I was paying the bills by teaching the classes, the independent sections that they wanted to have me to teach at uh, Purdue. Did pick up some uh, work on the side of teaching at local community colleges uh, in Indiana while I was there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I had the uh, fortune of moving back home four years ago. Uh, my current uh, full-time employment is with the University of Alaska Anchorage and the Assistant Director of Debate for the Sewell Debate Program. And then my side job is I'm the uh, head coach for the West Anchorage High School Drama Debate and Presence Program. Um, that also, in some ways, kind of suggests uh, that leads into community involvement. Uh, I essentially look at my full-time work as my primary way of being plugged into the community by essentially working with uh, students of today, both at the high school and collegiate level, and then I had the fortune, uh, thankfully, of also working with middle school students as we run a middle school debate program, uh, we being the university running the middle school debate program, and also uh, working as a liaison on the high school programs. Uh, so I essentially look at my work history as my primary means of uh, community involvement in uh, my role as a, uh, an educator with an emphasis in civics and political science background. So then the final part of the question, why I feel I could be a good representative for the approximately seven weeks uh, that this uh, position uh, would run through. Uh, I would essentially treat every uh, substantive issue that came up for a vote as if I were judging a debate round, which would involve consulting the evidence, doing research, which I'm very skilled at doing, uh, a variety of sources. I feel like I have a pretty good uh, grasp on uh, where to find better sources of information and how to avoid lower quality sources of information. I would weigh the costs and the benefits, considering the perspective of the variety of stakeholders uh, that ex exist and reside within our community, and would seek to find uh, creative solutions to community problems uh, that would have the greatest good for the greatest winter. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. All right, uh, Mr. Danger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, education, I get high school and trade school, uh, operating engineer, trade. Work history, I've done everything heavy construction, um, run bars and restaurants, uh, state security company, was a director of security at the Alias, the Prince Hotel, um, was a professional wrestler, um, stuntman, actor, and um, I don't know if I've done pretty much everything. Worked on the slope, um, in villages, 10 years with ASRC. So that's my work history. Then, as far as community involvement, I was elected twice to the Gerber Board of Supervisors. The first term, I was the public safety um, supervisor, and the second term, I was the chairman. Um, I was a PTA president, Cub Master, um, all that. And then, as far as why I want to work with you guys, because I think you guys are doing a fantastic job together as a group and a team. You made some fantastically good decisions for this city and this community, and I would like to be part of that. Thank you, Mr. Danger. All right, moving to Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question uh, for all of you is, uh, are you aware of any conflicts of interest that you may have in, in any of our upcoming agendas? And if you did happen to have a conflict of interest, what would you do? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Mr. Danger, we'll start with you. I have none, and if I did, I would report it immediately. Thank you, Mr. Danger. Uh, Mr. Schultz. None that I'm aware of, uh, and I would report and put up potentially to recuse myself if necessary, but if unless the University of Alaska has some pressing business with the municipality of Anchorage that would affect debate education. Uh, other than that, I think I'd be okay. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Kerman. Not that I'm aware of. Um, however, things do come up, and if there 
there was a potential for a conflict or that there might be a conflict, I would declare that to the assembly and then to make the decision. Thank you, Mr. Perman. Mr. Tremaine. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. If I knew, I'd tell you. Thank you, Mr. Tremaine. Mr. Cubitz. Uh, <clears throat> I think the only conflict that I could have is uh, my employment in the last career room. Uh, but let me talk about the relationship that I have with the city. I, I deal probably most of the time with the Fort of Anchorage. Uh, Stephen Buffalo and the crew and Sharon out there to talk about some issues that we have. Or the land to the port. I just got approved by the legislature, so the port will have all of its land uh, intact for the port expansion program. That probably will come to the people at some point. Uh, uh, the other deal with planning a fair amount, good shooting, the group there with some of the development, the development we have going on down, down at Chip Creek, as you know, the head condominium project is underway. That's starting at Delta the City there. So I do have a relationship. Uh, conflict, obviously, if something came up that affected the railroad or, or my employer, I would certainly have to declare that willingly. It just doesn't work any other way. But uh, uh, I must say that I enjoy the relationship with the municipality and some of the departments, and it's, it's good having one uh, with them uh, from the railroad. Thank you, Mr. Kubitz. Mr. Croft. Yeah, I, um, we made the rule at the beginning, we asked everybody, and, and so it's open to everybody, but I guess it was, um, I, when I thought about it, it was more for Mr. Danger and the two Mr. Dardens. Um, the community councils, when they express their uh, interest, uh, advocacy for having this replacement, had two criteria. They wanted somebody who could, uh, with drop-in experience, that is, had enough experience on the assembly that they didn't have much of a learning curve and that somebody who wasn't running for the long-term office, so could just concentrate on doing it. Um, and so I guess I want to ask you and then everybody else about those two criteria. Um, is it important, or is it proper, or is it, uh, in your opinion, appropriate for us to say we, we prefer somebody that wasn't both at the same time trying to govern and run, because I know you have filed for that office, and I want to give you a chance to say why that is an appropriate thing. And then this idea of being able to just drop in because you either been on the um, uh, assembly before or have been around it as an aide. Is that important or not? So those two things. Mr. Croft, you don't mind. I know that mostly applies to Mr. Danger, but we've been going back and forth. Oh, sure. We start with Mr. Cubits and then go back. And Mr. Danger, you can have some time to, to think about your response. So those ideas, is it appropriate mm -hmm. to have dropping experience and not be running for the Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair? Yes. Um, just for kind of fairness, a lot of these kind of processes, you would start with different individuals each time, not just at the ends, because it provides a certain benefit to those individuals. Sure. We have a, uh, I believe for the actual speaking, we did a drawing, that's not uh, right, uh, Ms. Silver, for the personal statements. Um, yeah, so it is from, it's in order right now. Oh, okay. I thought, for some reason, I, I thought it was in alphabetical order, because it was danger, garden, garden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, and then it falls out. Mr. Chair, you just ran on and started with the individual. So no one benefits from being the first or the last every time. Okay, well, let's start with Mr. Perman then, and then go to the left. Excuse me. As, as far as the criteria, the first one, uh, which the community councils were interested in, in not having somebody who is simultaneously running for the office. That would allow the person here to provide full attention to the, the seven weeks. But it, it's arduous to run and uh, it's going to take your concentration. And, and I can tell you, I have no intention. I did not file that they've done that. Uh, I'm very happy with the opportunity for a much shorter uh, piece of service. What was the other part of it? Sort of a drop in experience that you could just hit the ground running. Well, sure, that's, that's very helpful, uh, I, would, I would think. Um, if anybody has direct background and, and the issues you're dealing with right now, or even just the procedures, the procedures alone, you know, knowing how your committees are structured and when they meet, et cetera, that all takes some time to figure that all out. And um, you don't have to go through that steep learning curve, that's very helpful. Thank you, Mr. Perman. Mr. Schultz. Uh, I think this is a great question. Um, 
And I, I made it clear to me, uh, KCBA reached out the day later and asked for a statement. Uh, and I tried to make it very clear that I'm not interested in this in a long-term proposition. I love my job as an educator. That is where I feel that uh, I get the most satisfaction, feel that I can do the most good for the community long-term. Uh, that said, uh, so yeah, I think that there is some uh, benefit to a interim appointment uniquely not running for the full-time position. Uh, and, and in relation to that, uh, as far as the broad experience goes, this is actually where perhaps I have a slightly different perspective than the community councils, and that is maybe some skepticism about somebody who would be too familiar with the processes, who could be too effective in accomplishing things in a six to seven week window of time when they weren't subject to approval by the voters. So since this is going to be an appointment-based position, that was why I felt I could step forward. I was seeing this as essentially volunteering for uh, jury duty, uh, given my skill set. Um, the last appointment, uh, or the last day that this would run through would be the one uh, day, the day of debate practice. I would meet after the second day of the uh, academic year started. Um, and then I would have tried to approach it uh, from an objective, disinterested perspective, that being not influenced by considerations of personal advantage. Um, and so if somebody, uh, not, not to disparage the wide range and uh, breadth of uh, qualifications and experience here, but just to point out that at the principal level, maybe there is some reason for concern or perhaps some skepticism of people who could be a little too effective when the people in the them. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Danger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I think it's, uh, my, my situation is I'm retired now. I just got laid off from my last job and I'm done working. So um, I have plenty of time. And, and you guys spend a lot of time. I, you guys are always at a meeting somewhere and that's very important. Very good about it. That's awesome. So I think a lot of politicians before have done the intern thing and run for something else later. We've had a guy that was a was the intern mayor and he ran for state senator and it worked out for him very well. I think this would be okay to be the intern and then it would be a jump start on becoming a full time assembly member. I don't think that would be a bad thing at all. It's almost like being an apprentice because it's such a short time. So uh, that's just my personal opinion of it. So I think there's a Definitely a plus for it, um, at least in my situation, being retired now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nature. Uh, Mr. Cubans. <clears throat> yes, I remember uh, reading about uh, uh, community councils not wanting anyone to run for it, and I did call one or two assembly members and just asked, I said, is this really true? Because, uh, I'm not interested in running at all. I was just kind of like a volunteer job. I thought it was appropriate that someone who didn't get appointed, that got appointed to run for the office. But, so that was good. As far as the drop in, you know the story there. I know, I know things have changed since I said up there. Uh, I know the break room has moved. I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> I think it's on the second floor now. But as far as the process, it's pretty much the same. Believe it or not, I'm a little bit of a victim of our family. The politics that we oftentimes watch in assembly on Tuesday nights. I know my wife likes to watch the legislature occasionally during the third session too. So, so, Feel like I'm pretty prepared. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Mr. Tremaine. Mm -hmm. uh, I can understand the concern about having someone come in who doesn't have official experience. Uh, not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, kind of agree with some of what you were saying, Mr. Schultz, is that it? Sure. Um, but I think it's really up to you uh, of the assembly. It's really, uh, I mean, it's your seat being filled. Really, uh, what you feel would be the best uh, best candidate based on character, maybe experience as well, common sense, technical ability to uh, to just step up and get it. Is that almost uh, I think he go ahead and start. Uh, it was dropping experience and whether you should be running or not running. Um, oh, okay. They're they're kind of linked, but not. I guess not. I didn't. I guess that's really a, an opinion I have. I wouldn't do it. I'm not going to run the vote at the same time. Thank you, Mr. Tremaine. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Tremaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One quick question for you, Dubai. I want a commitment from you that you'll be at every Senate meeting, regular schedule of Senate meeting, because I have a real problem with the Senate members that don't show up at meetings when we transact business. So I want a commitment from each one of you that you'll attend regularly scheduled Sunday Senate meeting. Um, I mean, We'll start with uh, Mr. Schultz and go right, because why not? 
Uh, yes, I would commit to every regularly scheduled uh, Tuesday evening assembly meeting as well as any additional or supplemental meetings uh, that might be required uh, outside of those hours. Uh, I would be surprised if there would be secondary committee work uh, related with this interim position, uh, but I'm willing to step into that as well. And uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, only conflict uh, in which I have already really cleared this with my supervisor uh, would be one debate team practice, which that's the reason why I'm usually not at assembly meetings is because our team always practices on Tuesday evenings from 5 30. So uh, I've gotten clear from him that I can miss that very first one uh, in the name of public service. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Berman. Yes, I, one of the first things I do is check your schedule, and uh, I can make and will make all the assembly meetings. Um, another reason I put my name in for this is my work at the Atwood Foundation has cycles. It's very busy periods. It's a busy month followed by two quiet months followed by a busy month. The busy month is June. The quiet months are July and August. I can really put myself to this. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Mr. Tremaine. Mr. Danger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, have nothing else to do. I've never missed a meeting. I'm so aware. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Danger. Uh, Mr. Costa. Thank you. A more philosophical question. So, much of this job is negotiating or navigating between differences of opinion and uh, figuring out a way to get six or more votes of an 11 member body. So what is your philosophy for managing conflict and difference? Thank you, uh, Mr. Constant. We'll start with you, Mr. Cubitz, and we'll go left. Uh, Mr. Cubitz, is your mic on? I'm sorry. I wrote down the difference of opinion, which I think is important. Uh, I know it, it gets to the whole philosophy of being in your position. Uh, I really like to make decisions uh, and decisions should be made on the facts, and hearing people. And I can almost surely say I've never been to a public hearing where I didn't learn something from someone in the public. And uh, I was I always surprised myself I'm not trying to uh, be presumptuous about an issue before it was heard. And I debated amongst people because you flat have to learn from, from other people before you can make a decision, otherwise, committed. Political suicide and get the backtrack. So, so to me, getting the information, the facts, the research, understanding the issue is the most important thing. Now, I think your other part of the question was how do you resolve conflict correctly? And, uh, that's, that's the tough one. You know, just have to uh, try to find the common ground, uh, try to find agreement on the goal. Sometimes you have to adjust the, uh, the needs uh, to get to the goal to do that. That's what I try to do when I'm negotiating with customers and employees and all those types of things. It's just try to get a good meeting in the minds. Trust at the end of the day, if you can't agree, you can't agree. But uh, agree that you're going to come back and do it again in a proper, proper, respectful way. So that's how I do the conflict. But to me, Learning as much as possible before I make a decision uh, is the most important thing I learned when I was sitting there. Thank you, Mr. Cubitz. Mr. Tremaine. Uh, I think it's really important to, to just find common ground with anyone uh, that might, might have a different opinion. Most times people don't all agree anyway. Uh, it's important to, uh, if you don't agree with, say, uh, one of us in a situation, we might have different opinion. Instead of getting on each other about it, stopping any kind of progress, you saying compromising is important. Not getting too riled up, not pointing any fingers. Uh, without sending too generic saying, it's important to hold yourself accountable. That's some integrity. Uh, I don't usually argue too much, though. So. Um, 
if there's more creative, more productive ways to get around things. Especially so not holding your own opinion as concrete that it might not really be. Is that all, Mr. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Perman. Thank you. Um, at the Alaska Humanities Forum, that was what we were all about. We were all about dialogue, discussion. We had ways of even perfecting it. And for a while, I was actually a professional uh, facilitator to try and help people come to uh, resolutions, uh, productive resolutions. That doesn't really apply to the assembly. It has its own process, which I have you know, been very impressed with, um, how it comes to resolutions, how it comes to massaging differences of opinions through your, your work sessions, through conversations you have amongst each other, the research that, that you do, and through compromise. When those proposals are up on the screen, uh, those didn't get there really quickly. They got there through discussion and head counting and doing your homework. And uh, it's a good process. And I, I like it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Perman. Mr. Schultz. So when thinking about a philosophy for managing differences of perspective, opinion, uh, sometimes goals or outcomes, uh, I think the first, uh, most important thing is to be respectful of everyone involved in the process. Uh, and to uh, try to remember that uh, everyone, well, hopefully everyone is acting for, uh, from the perspective of what is best uh, the best intentions for the greater good of the community. Uh, that said, there are some small things that, that are easy to do. Uh, one thing I always try to abide by is avoiding you centered language, making sure that uh, you're not personalizing the issue. Uh, and this is one thing that's crucial in academic debate, is having a dispassionate discussion of the issues at hand. Uh, in relation to that, uh, if there is disagreement, try to identify what the source of that disagreement is. Uh, ideally, it's factual. Uh, sometimes, there's dis a, di a disagreements based upon uh, inconsistent sets of information, so trying to identify where that disagreement is occurring, where that breakdown is occurring, and then uh, making sure that everyone has all the available information at hand. Uh, if it is not a factual-based disagreement, if it is in fact a difference in goals, then trying to find where those sources of agreement and consensus are and build from that. Uh, we, we've, it, the, the phrase compromise has been mentioned. Uh, and in kind of a related vein, uh, I think that the process of achieving compromise is won by a collaboration. And that is trying to identify, well, where is it where we do all agree on? And maybe we, and the consequence of that agreement will be relatively small in while we're dealing with a bigger issue. But then focusing on and recognizing that uh, incremental change is not bad change. You know, find the small uh, points of agreement to build upon to start building that consensus by a collaborative process. Now, the, the problem with collaboration is that it's costly. It costs time. But I think that's what institutions like this are here to facilitate, is making sure uh, that we put the time in to uh, effectuating a collaborative process of consensus building that hopefully results in finding creative solutions to community health problems. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Danger. Thank you. Don't take it personal. Keep the drama out of it. Use common sense. And do what is right for the majority of people. Is that all, Mr. Danger? Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Croft. So, I, the other people may come on as of now. I'm, I'm the last one in the queue, so this uh, uh, maybe in, and, and so I just wanted to uh, thank all of you. The, um, I knew Mr. Perman and Mr. Kubitz more, and, and, but um, so maybe came in with that bias, but I've been particularly impressed with them. Uh, but with, with you guys as well, I haven't known uh, Mr. Tremaine, Mr. Schultz, and Mr. Danger's son, and uh, I'm just impressed with the whole panel. Um, are there, uh, I asked uh, Anchorage wide issues, are there specific issues to West Side that you um, feel are important or different, and how do you address those? Let's start, uh, let's see, we haven't started with you, Mr. Tremaine. Let's start with you and go to the left. Yeah, I think the I think the parks are in West Anchorage right now. A little bit cleaned up. That's one issue that's been on my mind. You always drive past them. You always walk by them. They're empty, overgrown. 
any thoughts? Will you be coming forward with some kind of ordinance resolution saying this is my vision and I want to have it in Anchorage? Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Schultz, and we'll go to the right. Short answer is no. And that's going back to the point I was making previously. I don't think that would be appropriate for an interim appointment uh, to the assembly. I think uh, that uh, the assembly resolution should be left to those who will be selected by uh, the voters of West Anchorage by this upcoming special election. Uh, I would see, uh, philosophically speaking, I would orient myself towards uh, being a voice for West Anchorage, uh, considering whether or not that is the uh, delegate role, uh, model versus the trustee model, depending upon the issue uh, at any given time, uh, to act upon existing uh, action items, not to put forth any action items, specifically when the voters of West Anchorage were not the ones who selected me to do that. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Kern. Thank you. Um, I do have several things I'd like to at least bring forward by the on the assembly. I know that seven weeks, three meetings is not going to accomplish that. It just doesn't work that way. If I can plant the seed and find others that would similarly um, like to carry it forward, including the eventual uh, full-time replacement, um, I'd like to do that. I think it's important to, from my perspective, to articulate what I think are the I'm hearing as the community's concerns, continue to bring them up, continue to make them be aware of them, and I will try to do that in those seven weeks. Thank you, Mr. Kern. Mr. Tremaine. Well, the, the, I have a series of questions. Do I have any grand plans for this next uh, seven weeks? Um, I mean, no, uh, but I'd, I'd love to come up with some if that's an hour. And you see, let's get it done. And, you know, in seven weeks, all right. You know, I want the, I want the city to be you know, the richest one in the nation and, uh, you know, free, free education, everything like that. But no, nothing, nothing too big. I mean, I, there's one specific thing, uh, the speed limit over that uh, blind corner at the end of Spinar, that's at 30, which would be like 15 times. I would lose the speed bump there. Just saying, if I could get that done, yeah, I'd, I'd run for that. Thank you, Mr. Kermit. I think that might be a multi year project. Uh, Mr. Cubitz. Yes, well, I think you heard the passion on my previous uh, talk about the Coast Trail. I guess if there's one thing I could accomplish, I would try to get something in place, do the research, have staff help, and help and put together uh, some sort of a framework for a long-range plan to protect that part of the Pacific Ocean, which happens to border the Coastal Trail, which needs a long-range plan to help. And uh, I know things take time, but I would put a lot of my personal effort trying to get that started, whether the resolution could, could come of it or something uh, you know, stronger than that, but at least have a framework, have the people aware of it. I'll talk to everyone about it, see if I can get the support here. But, you know, and that's the one issue that I try to live every day. There's so many people on that trail, and it needs to be a line down the road too. It needs to be wider because there are accidents on it, and people some people ride too fast on their bikes, some people walk too many dogs at one time, you know, that sort of thing. But, but I just think that as far as quality of life on that particular part of town, I don't want to ignore San Lake too, because that's a certain part of the district. But this is one thing that I have some passion for, and I think it would affect a lot of people. And I would certainly do whatever I could in this short period to try to get, to get that going. Thank you, Mr. Cubitz. Mr. Danger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I agree with Mr. what Mr. Schultz said. It's a pretty short term to try to do something like that. Um, being on the Public Safety Advisory Committee for five years, I've only done three resolutions. So if you were doing three meetings and you were putting resolutions out, that'd be pretty tough one. So I don't think I would. But thank you. Thank you, Mr. Danger. Okay. Mr. Chair, before we move on. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, Mr. Perman, you said, yes, you have some ideas, and then you did not speak to any of them. And so uh, if I have, I would like to sure. ask to hear what that might be. Thank you for the extra opportunity. Um, I have several ideas. I mentioned this one about Spinar Road going from 30 down to 36 before you have to deal with the intersection in Minnesota. I think that's a project that's coming in the future. Um, on the public safety arena, down on the 21st, we have a house at uh, 830 uh, 21st Avenue that has been a drug house, a 
car theft has every kind of problem. And we have an ordinance on the books now that says if you get more than eight calls to the police, you start getting heavily fined. That was a very effective tool to cleaning up these problem houses that we have. Um, that neighborhood would like to see that number drop from eight to a lower number. It just takes too long to get to eight. So that's number two. And then third, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Constant was the uh, work on downtown. That, that's a very general, very large thing. But those are the three areas I, I'd like to see some attention on. Thank you, Mr. Kerman. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've got sort of a uh, short answer question with a follow-up part B that I expect a little longer explanation here. Um, are you aware of the rules that uh, do not allow more than three assembly members to be present at the same location at the same time? without noticing, without that meeting being noticed. And the part B is, what is your understanding of the definition of a serial meeting? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, let's start with, let's start with uh, Mr. Danger and uh, go to the left. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was aware that the, uh, the three people when I was on that care reporter supervisor we had the same um, rule of um, doing that. As far as serial meetings, I'm not familiar with that term, so I not, don't know what that is. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Danger. Uh, Mr. Schultz. I'm sorry, I pointed to the right, I said left. Go to the right, Mr. Schultz. Uh, I was not previously aware of that, but that's good information to know. Um, hopefully at large scale community events in town, maybe we're a little less rich on that because I think there's at least a few folks here at various events that I've attended in the last few months. But, uh, and as far as the serial meeting uh, phrase, I, uh, perhaps I understand conceptually what you're talking of, uh, but I'm not sure I'm familiar with that phrasing. Uh, do you uh, elaborate or perhaps give us a little bit more of a sense of what you're asking us? You don't have to, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> oh, well, in, in actuality, um, um, we, we are not allowed to contact other members of the assembly um, to talk about a specific issue. We can't contact each individual member. Uh, we're limited to contacting you know, three other members would be the most you can contact. So if you contact them more than that, technically you say it. And that's totally different than being in the legislature where the job is going door to door to talk with your other legislators and explain your piece of legislation or resolution that you're trying to pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Uh, so uh, I know this is what Mr. Peterson meant because I meant it because I know he's an expert on this, but it's uh, actually two other members. So yourself plus two other members. Two, a total of three. Right? Yeah. Right. Mr. Chair, one other question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when the chair speaks right or left, he means for the liberal arts leaders out there, stage right or stage right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was an econ major, so we're moving along the x axis. Uh, John, you want to? You still have a couple seconds. Are you? You good? Okay, Mr. Perman. Yeah, yes, I'm very familiar with the three member limit. Uh, no that is a serial meeting. You just explained it. You're not allowed to sort of have a conversation with one other assembly member. Hang up the phone and said, "I'll I'll be right back to you after I talk to another assembly member," and so on and so forth. That becomes a serial meeting, and that defies the spirit of the of the, the rule which is to have deliberation happen openly in front of the public, public meetings, public regular meetings. That's what you're trying to avoid is doing things behind closed doors with the parents of Thank you, Mr. Kermain. Mr. Kermain. Uh, yeah, I had, a, I had a little before. And um, zero means nine. OK. Mr. Cubitz. Yes, I was aware of Public meetings act, whatever this is called. It's been in effect, I think, so it's in effect. This has been changed. No, you doesn't. can't have more than three at a time. But I did learn something tonight. Serial meetings, never heard of them before. So, 
I think it became much more common when cell phones became more ubiquitous, it's so easy to call people. Uh, no, for the record, we're joined by Mr. Darden. Uh, Ms. Timboski, would you like, actually, before that, Mr. Darden, uh, everyone had a, one minute to introduce himself. Uh, would you like to take that minute now? Why don't you go ahead? My name is Dustin Darden. I'm a lifelong resident here in Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm really concerned in the avenue that our city is going down. We need some men with some backbone to uh, take back our city and to end the poisoning of our people through the water supply with the floor with the floor out. We need people that are going to stand up for truth and that are going to stand up for our constitutional liberties. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Right, uh, Mr. Boss. Oh, Mr. Boss, you okay? All right. Well, uh, if there are any other questions, actually, uh, Mr. Dyson, are you? Uh, do you have any questions you'd like to ask of the? Uh, Okay. Uh, Ms. LaFrance, on the phone, do you have any additional questions you'd like to ask of the applicants? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. LaFrance. Well, I was going to ask a question about honey buckets, but I'm not going to. Uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to everyone who applied, and we're going to take a quick break right now. Yes. Just to give me time, and I know there's an individual who follows the public process, and oh, is concerned cool. that we don't allow the public thank to speak for a minute. That yeah, yeah. Afford that. Yes, thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you for reminding me, Mr. Constant. Before I close this work session, while the time for audience participation, is there anyone here who would like to uh, speak at this work session? If you'd like to, please come down from the microphone. Three minutes, Mr. Chairman. The time frame. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please uh, state your name, spell for the record. My name is Eugene Carl Hanneman. I represent myself, all the public process. Public process is an appropriate decision made by the government bodies and the public interest. I live in Madison Valley. Um, where do I begin? I'll be brief. Uh, one thing is, uh, I'd like to bring up as part of the meeting is two points. Number one, it's important for you to hear what people are saying, as well as than hearing what you say, and I have difficulty on, it was reference to one of the members, it was difficult hearing for most of the meeting, and if there is a problem in that scenario, it needs to be corrected and stopped, and so that everyone could hear what they said, and it was continued throughout the meeting. And uh, also, um, no agenda was on the, uh, on the website for this meeting that I saw, and no place for public comment. In reference to the right for the public to speak, and thank you very much for and taking a note, um, state law requires that all public means to provide a reasonable opportunity for the public to be heard, and uh, that means not zero, do some time. But I'd also like to bring up one thing, and it's on subject, though I'm allowed to speak on any issue, it is the incident uh, that goes back a couple of meetings ago, in which uh, first there was a, a motion around 10.47 p.m. to continue the meeting for 15 minutes, then at 11, 11.15, and then a motion Continue the meeting for five minutes. Uh, at the end of the meeting, you had words that said the public could only speak on the items that are not on the agenda. And on that same agenda, there was items that are on the subject of this, by the way. Uh, that so when you passed, I'm dealing with what have you been handle on the uh, idea of the appointment and so forth. Uh, you left no chance for the public to speak. And that before you made that decision, the, item, the step was laid on the table for that for those documents, and then you voted. And then when it came time for public comment, you had only two minutes left in the meeting. And public comment, myself going up, I asked for a, a motion to continue the meeting. No, mo no one would continue, so I was allowed two minutes instead of normal three. And then I asked after two minutes to continue, and no, and there was a denial to uh, continue. 
And the idea of Green Mountain Road and State Law provide a reasonable opportunity for public to be heard, certainly that did not happen. And of all meetings, we're talking about the election, appointing someone, and also having special elections. And the end result, you made those decisions without connecting with people. And then uh, lastly, in closing, lost my time here, <laughs> forgive me, but um, I think it would have been more appropriate. I've seen how this thing runs in other cities, as you know, how you follow elections. And then I would have suggested that when you ask questions, you have one person in the room, or if you ask that person questions for a certain number of time, then the next person comes in, and the next person comes in. So no one has a chance of knowing what the answers are, okay, of the other parties. And you have a clear idea of where that person is coming from, and that would have been a much better process. Thank you very much, and thank you for a chance to speak. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Anyone else from the audience? All right. Uh, well, that, that's all we have for now. Is there anyone else? My colleagues, uh, we are going to take a break. We'll come back at 5 for uh, the, the special meeting. So we're session adjourned.